Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we're taking a look at the NECA Aliens 30th Anniversary Creature Pack. This pack was originally teased to us, I believe at Toy Fair earlier this year, and the pack originally wasn't supposed to be Aliens specific. I believe the original image showed both creatures from Aliens and Alien 3, but I think it became maybe a little too much or they wanted to add more to it, so NECA decided to split it into two different packs. Supposedly we're still going to get the Alien 3 pack down the road, but here we get some old stuff, some new stuff, and some very interesting diorama building pieces for our Alien collection. We get a total of four face huggers in a pack. We get two chest bursters, which are brand new, unless you count the ones that came, like, I think with the San Diego Comic Con exclusive Wolf Predator, or maybe one of the other ones. Back when they did the AVPR line, way back when. And then we get two stasis tubes for the face huggers, which was the real selling point for me because I love building little dioramas for my figures and having them displayed with actual props. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. Now, if you saw my review of the Queen of Bishop or the alien eggs, you've seen this face hugger before. The exact same sculpt, as far as I can tell, the same paint job. So nothing really new here at all. I still love how nicely these are detailed. We do get the little alien vagina thing there on the bottom. It has its eight little crabby legs, the two that are up here in front, and the four that are kind of down on the ground. There are little sacks here on the side, the breathing apparatus. There's a nice shiny, glossy texture to it. There's a nice black wash getting in all the cracks, so the dark brown's kind of accented by those darker spots. Do the long tail back here. I have a little bit of flash on the side here on this one, but not something I have on any of the other ones, I think. We flip them over, we can see on that tail, we do get the little telltale holes that indicate a bendy wire inside. And just like any of the other ones, you could take that bendy wire and manipulate it around. It kind of ends about where that flash is, actually. So at the very, very end of the tail is not articulated, but most of the rest is. And then it ends, you can see the seam there on the body where the bendy wire runs out. So it's a simple enough piece, but I always like these. I have tons of them because I went a little overboard collecting alien eggs, but a few more won't hurt. And now I can keep all those face huggers with their eggs, as opposed to having some that I took out to interact with the other figures. So it kind of works out that way. So we have two of the loose face huggers and then two that are actually inside the stasis tubes here. And our first new piece here is the chest burster, very clearly the aliens version because it has the little T-Rex arms there up front. I think they did a really nice job with this. It has some cool blood effects going over it looking like it just ripped out of some poor colonist chest. Actually goes all the way down the tail on here. There's that very iconic xenomorph looking head. You can even see the little teeth sculpted in there, which is great attention to detail. I'm actually really surprised how much detail they crammed into such a little head on this chest burster. It's pretty damn impressive. The overall body is brown, a very similar brown to the face huggers. There's not so much of a black wash, probably because of that bloody paint job on it. You kind of just get it here with the segmented body in places like that, but it's not super prominent all over the figure. It's definitely designed so that it looks like it's about to run away and go off and become its own larger xenomorph. The body is permanently sculpted in kind of this Z shape. So the head is pointing out and then the body is pointing away from it. And we kind of have this upright section here in the middle. There's no bendy wire in that so you can't manipulate that part but there is a bendy wire throughout the tail here and it goes almost to the very tip of the tail which gives you a pretty good range of articulation here another problem i've had even though the bottom is flat it takes a little bit of work to get this guy to stand up on his own i was kind of having to either snake the body so that it has a little more width to support its weight or to just curve the body around in general obviously it's a limitation of the design of this figure i had the same problem with the little worms that came with the prometheus creature set and there's really nothing you could do to avoid it. So either pose it strategically or get some sticky tack or something and put it under it just to help it stay upright. And last but not least, the main attraction of this set, the stasis tube. You get two of these. They look really cool. There's a nice clear plastic middle here where you can see the face hugger enclosed. So these are two separate face huggers. So if you never wanted to remove them from the stasis tube, you don't have to. You don't have to put them in there yourself. I did try to like turn them so that they weren't all pointing the same direction. So the thing when I first got them, they were all kind of pointing outwards and I didn't want them all to look so uniform. So I did change it up a little bit. Here at the top of the canister, we have this kind of control mechanism looking bit. Little extruded parts almost look like switches here. There's some cutouts in the cylinder itself. From the back, it looks pretty plain. And just from that one front angle that it looks a little more interesting and detailed. You also see down inside of it's a little hollow on top. The cap comes down over the plastic. We have these three metal rods 
studs that connect they actually do peg into these plastic inserts up here and as you can see when you first get it it does come with some clear elastics that help hold the whole thing together which is kind of a nice touch face hugger suspended inside and you come down to the bottom the bottom is pretty plain very similar to the top you have the three little places where the metal rods plug in and then you flip it over you can see the battery compartment and the switch we flip that switch and we get an led that lights up from the bottom a nice blue light and illuminates the face hugger inside the tube now another cool feature of this if we take these clear elastics off is that we can actually remove the top of the stasis tube and as i mentioned before then you can get in here and you can move around your face hugger reposition it how you want it you can see there's a notch back here in the plastic and that corresponds to a notch here on the lid so it makes plugging it back together a little easier the biggest struggle for me is getting these metal poles to line up and to plug into the three little receiving spots there it's just kind of hard to line everything up and get a good seal on it when you're doing it like this that's not such a big deal but one of the other cool factors of this set is that you can actually fill them with water NECA couldn't ship them with water they said it was too much of an issue of it leaking but they made sure it was waterproof it was designed to be able to do this and I'm pretty darn happy they did because it gives a really cool effect if you compare two of them side by side actually I'll rotate this around so you can get the same kind of view of the face hugger we can see the water adds a cool kind of distortion to it there's a couple bubbles inside that give it that cryo tube look and there you get your side by side comparison with the light effect on and it just looks so much cooler when the lights dispersed through the water it's kind of a more even light throughout and i really think it just adds to that cool stasis tube look obviously you have to keep in consideration how you're going to store these you have to be more careful with them when you do have the water inside the stasis tube but i think i'm going to fill all four of mine up with water and display them like that because it's a much cooler look than just on its own i will say now that i've filled up the last two of these containers with water a couple things to keep in mind is that the water has to go pretty much to the very top of the cylinder for you not to see the water line at the top so right to the point of the water overflowing, pretty much any gap at the top will be noticeable. So you gotta get it right there and be able to get the lid on without spilling any of the water. Also, I did keep the clear rubber bands and put them back on after I was done filling them with water, just because anything that will give the slightest bit of help against these spilling if they ever do get knocked over, I'm all for. I don't know if it'll really help, and I don't really wanna test it. But hopefully the rubber bands will keep things a little more together than they would be otherwise, and and they're really hard to see unless you're really close to the canister and looking for them specifically. For a size comparison, here's a couple of sorted human characters or humanoid characters at least next to the stasis tubes. You can see they come up to about the shoulder on a standard adult male, maybe a little higher than that. And then with Newt, they're taller than her. As for the chest burster, this is about as close as I've gotten so far to what I talked about in this initial Ripley review of having her clutching the chest burster coming out of her as she plummets into the molten lead. Obviously not a perfect setup, but you can get a vague idea for the scale of the chest burster next to a human, and it looks about right to me. I am so glad NECA decided to put out this creature pack. From what I remember reading, I think it's done pretty well for them, and they are planning more. We do know there's a new Alien 3 one that they've least created prototypes for. There's also a Predator accessory pack coming down the line with some skinned bodies and some blast effects and other cool things like that. And this seems to have been something NECA's been a little hesitant to do too much. They did some dioramas a while ago that were kind of similar to this in concept, but definitely more of these. Love this concept, and I think this one was very, very well executed on their part as well. Getting these stasis tubes actually made me go and redo my entire Aliens display in my Detolf shelf to kind of make it look more like that lab scene from the film, just to capitalize on how cool these things look. I haven't gone back and rewatched the movie to try to count, but looking at some stuff online it looks like there's somewhere between six and eight of these total so I may end up picking up at least one more pack of stasis tubes but I think four is actually a really good number it looks pretty good on my display shelf so I may actually just end it with these four but either way they get a very very strong recommend for me if you've been picking up the alien line thus far you're gonna be happy with them make sure to follow me on Instagram username outside the box reviews also check me out on Facebook link below and until next time this has been our outside the box reviews Game over, man! Game over!